Hi, my name's Andrew. Welcome to the channel. I've been experimenting with the looper and the auto FX rack in Ableton Live 12 to try and emulate the behavior of the Octatrack with live looping where you'd capture a loop and then use various scenes to manipulate it, high pass filter, mutes, etc. See if I could, as a project, see if I could rebuild something like that in Ableton. So let's have a look what we've got. So you get a feeling about what I'm trying to achieve. We've got a drum loop here, a pad. Here's the main mix recording for this video so we could ignore this one, I'm just recording the audio. On the main channel I have the audio effect rack set up with my looper. I could of course have put this on the drum loop and just captured the drum loop and manipulated the drum loop but I wanted to capture the entire mix. So that's set up here. Let's have a listen. Have a drum loop and a, a pad playing here. We have a dry signal coming in. We have a series of effects here. You can put any effects you like in here. Have a reverb, redux, filter, etc. Delay. I've set up some scenes or macro variations similar to what you'd have on the octa track here. We can click between them. High pass filter. A few more effects on this one. The all in. Dry. We have a looper here set to four bars. capture a first loop. The dry signal, here we go. Waits four bars and it captures. You could set this to two bars, one bar, whatever you like. And now, the live audio, the incoming audio has been stopped and we have control over the loop. Let's capture another one. Perhaps we wanted to, oh, you can mute these now, you'll hear now, no difference. Let's say we wanted a loop without the drums. Unmute the drums. Or, if we wanted to add some effects, we'll capture a loop with the high filter. You can put our drums back on, capture a loop with the high filter and the drums. Perhaps we try the all in. Select that here. New loop capture. I think you get the idea. You can set this up how you want. Reverse. If you wanted to, you could drag this loop out. Put it into your production. There's lots of things you can do, just use it effect, create loops, effect track, whatever you want. Anytime you can go back to your dry signal, filter. Okay, so let's have a look how this is built. Just mute the sounds for a second. It's on the main output. I'll delete the entire effect track and rebuild it so you can get an idea of what I did. Let's get rid of that. So choose our effects. As I say, you can put what effects you like in here. I'll just go with what I previously used, which was a delay. We had an auto filter. Um, it was the redux, I believe. A reverb and the looper to capture the audio. I believe the looper is available in all versions of uh, Ableton Live 12 apart from the light. It's the only one that doesn't have a looper, so you can you don't have to have Suite to do this. Um, let's now group these. We select 
Shift, select all of the items, right click, group. We now have a group which opens up the macro controls here. We can click here and we have eight macros. We can make that up to 16 if we wanted to, but we will stick with eight. We have here another button, macro variations. So we can now create the various scenes we want to switch between to capture in the looper. I will do one thing, I will move the auto filter to a high pass. I prefer starting with the high pass, it's my preference. And we will macro map our controls. Here we go, we click the map button here. This brings us into our settings. We can take the dry wet here, select that of the delay, map that here. Rename, delay, delay, dry wet. Let's take the filter frequency, map that. We'll take the resonance, map that. The sample rate from Redux and the bit rate. From the reverb, we can take the size, decay, and dry wet. rename that one as well. Reverb, dry wet. And the first macro var variation we will build is a dry signal. So let's have our delay send down, our reverb send down. Everything else is okay. And we'll reintroduce our audio. We can close the mapping now and we can create a new variation. And the way the variations work, it's not the case that you click new then start doing all the settings, that's not how it works. You do your settings first and then based on these settings you create a variation. So I've set the settings here, click new, variation one, we will call dry. For our next variation we then have to, using dry, staying on dry, we will set the settings we want. Maybe some frequency, high pass, a little bit of reverb, new. And that captures the settings here, we'll call this high pass. Let's do one more final variation. What have we got? Some delay. A bit more reverb, maybe making a strange reverb. Infinitely small room. Go 8 bit. Finally, we can again select all of the effects we have in our rack, excluding the looper and the effect rack itself, and we can fold these, right click fold, make it into a compact device. Now, finally, we, we need to set up the looper. First setting would be the number of bars we want to capture, four, how we want to quantize that, I'll do that over four bars as well. This is an important function here, when it's on plus it adds the captured loop to the incoming audio, which we don't want. We want the captured loop to play and the incoming audio to stop. So this allows it to play once it's captured and not add it to the incoming audio. But we also need to set the input output setting, we need to set that to record over, over, dub and stop, which stops 
stops the incoming audience. And once we have those things set up, I think we're ready to go. Let's try out first, we'll go to dry. Select the dry here, we can go through the various scenes. Capture a dry signal. It waits four bars. we have it. Perhaps try one with a high pass filter. Well, I hope this has been useful to somebody. I'm going to carry on experimenting, see what else I can do. Maybe make some new videos with some new ideas, work on some new things. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Bye-bye.